Okay. Uh, so the next thing I want to discuss uh, is that uh, basically the goal of this lecture is to tell you the the kind of uh, things that exist uh, in the that that you need to take into consideration when looking at such a problem. And uh, uh, regularization, which includes variable selection, is one of the primary concerns if you have a lot of predictors. And this is actually right now one of the most active and the challenging research topics in deep learning is to how to now we, we have all kinds of algorithms to perform this optimization to get a, a, a deep neural network. But how do you regularize the network appropriately is a, is a very non-trivial question. We still don't have a general good answer yet. So what regularization does is that particularly when you have many, many axes and have uh, relatively few samples compared to the number of axes you have. So for example, you have xi, each xi being xi0, xim. So, so you have m factors that you can use to predict your, your, your y. And then the number of i's you have goes from x1 all the way to xn. So then you can consider the whole data set x to be a matrix. You have a n rows and m columns. The nice case in which you don't really need much regularization uh, if we use linear regression, for example, is when n is much, much larger than m. Right. So uh, in the last lecture, we have 200 samples, 200 n, and only have three m's. So this is a case you probably don't really need much regularization if the signal to noise ratio is high enough. But if n and m are on the same order of magnitude, Let's say if you have 200 samples and you have 100 different factors that you can use potentially to predict your y, then it's a very dangerous territory because the potential of overfitting is simply too much. Right? So, so even without constructing a high order polynomials of these explanatory factors, you get a very large number that you can use in the linear regression. So the potential of overfit is great. There are two approaches that can remedy that. One is variable selection. That is to choose a subset of these M explanatory factors to use to predict Y. But now the question is which subset to use. And uh, particularly if M is large, then Iterating through all combinations of M is too expensive, right? So if you can, if you uh, have intuitive sense of combinatorics, you probably know that all the possible subsets of these M factors goes exponential to M, right? So so figuring out uh, how the regression performs. Um, with all the subsets, it's very difficult. So that's when the, the concept of regularization comes over. The idea is to come up with a optimization problem that prevents the overfitting by restricting, by basically killing that variable almost automatically if that variable doesn't contribute much. So how does it work? For example, one of the most uh, intuitive way to construct the regularization that gives me a problem that is very similar to the spirit of variable selection is the following. So instead of minimizing, so let's say again we have a regression problem and you can apply the same thing to regularization problem. i equal to 1 to n of um, the difference between yi and the uh, summation of j goes from 1 to m of a 
let's say aj times x i j plus b so that is my y hat and y minus y hat square so i want to, this is the function i usually want to minimize in a linear regression problem right i perform a linear combination of all my explanatory factors uh, indexed by j and add a constant that's my prediction the difference between my prediction and the actual data is going to be the contributing factor in the objective function now instead of just minimizing that i also want to add another lambda times summation of j goes from 1 to m of an indicator function that says a j equal to oh, not equal to zero so what is that that is a number that is either equal to zero or one depending on if a j equal to zero or not if a j is equal to zero i'm adding nothing but if a j is equal to zero i'm adding lambda into that objective function so what am I penalizing by adding that term? Or, or what does that summation mean? Can somebody use, can somebody summarize what does that summation mean in English? That's something like uh, you have seen in Monte Carlo methods, right? What is the summation of an indicator function? It's like the amount of positives you have. Yeah, the number, right? The number of j's that satisfy that condition. In this case, that is the number of non-zero aj's. Or the number of non-zero coefficients in here. So I'm penalizing how many non-zero coefficients I have, right? So basically, if I have a model that all of these factors are non-zero, it's less desirable according to this additional term because I'm minimizing this, right? It's less desirable than a different model that has only few of these explanatory factors contributing to the model. It's saying that the fewer terms being active, the better. Yes? Uh, in this case, is the lambda like a Lagrange multiplier, or is it a parameter that we set? Oh, good question. Lambda is a parameter we choose. It's usually called the, the strength of the regularization. And how to choose that belongs to the next uh, slide. Uh, that's kind of, uh, uh, that's called the uh, cross-validation, yes? No, 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 okay.